Okay, let's do this. So here's a problem. I have a rod of length L with a total charge Q on it. Now, <clears throat> I want to find an electric field right here. You know, in the book, and the way we normally do it is find an electric field perpendicular to the middle, but I want to find it along the axis. Okay, so, I mean, we're still going to do things the same way. We're still going to break it into small pieces, add up the electric field due to all these little pieces. Um, so let's just break this into a little piece right here. There's a typical piece, dq, and I want to find the electric field right there. <clears throat> First, let's think about vectors. It doesn't matter where I am on this. These are all going to make an electric field going that way. So I really only need the x component of the electric field. So I don't have to worry about vectors. So I can say dex, that's the x component. There's no y component, there's no z component. It's going to be, this is just like a point charge. So it's going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dq, that's a d, over r squared. That's the electric field due to a point charge where this is going to be r. The distance from here to there is r. So right there you can see if s is the distance from the, along the x-axis and l is the length, this piece is going to be at a distance of x. So r, l doesn't matter, I was wrong, r is going to be equal to s minus x. So because I'm going to integrate over x, not r, so I'm going to need to make that substitution. Now the other thing I need to do is get rid of this dq. I'm not going to integrate over dq. I'm going to add these pieces up in the x direction. So I need my integration variable in terms of dx. So now if we assume that it has a uniform charge density, then this should be true. dq over dx is q over l. So the ratio of charge to length for the short piece is the same as the ratio of charge to length for the long piece. So that means that dq equals q over l dx. So now I can put this in, I can put this in, and I get dex 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l dx s minus x squared. That's the contribution of the electric field due to this piece at that location. But I want to find all the pieces. I want to find the electric field due to all the pieces. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to integrate. I'm going to add up from x equals 0 to x equals L. So this is going to be ex 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over L 0 to L dx s minus x squared. Okay, this isn't a terrible integral. You, we can do it. Um, so let's just say a u substitution. Since I have u and du right there, I can say u equals s minus x, du equals negative dx. So this integral becomes <clears throat> I'll leave the limits off for right now. Negative du over u squared, and that's going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l, and this is just going to be negative, it's, it's going to be 1 over u. And u, I can put back in u of s minus x from 0 to l. Okay, so now if I do that, I get ex 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l and then I get this 1 over s minus l minus 1 over s. Okay, let's check the units first. It should have units of a same thing as electric field due to a point charge, so it should be q over distance squared. Here I've got the q, here I've got one distance, I'm going to multiply it by another, so I do get distance squared. Okay. Now, what about the case where I get really, really, really far away? As s goes to infinity, 
the electric field should go to zero. So that looks like that would happen right here. And you could simplify this some, but as S increases, this goes zero and so does that. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> you could also do the limit as L goes to zero. It should look like a, like a point charge, but that's not so obvious here, so I'll leave that alone. Okay, one other thing. What if it does not have a uniform charge density on the rod? What if I say lambda equals beta plus alpha x, and, and lambda is equal to dq over dx. That's the charge density. Then, in this case, that's a d. It doesn't even look like a d. dq dx. In this case, I would have to, up here, I wouldn't have this q over l dx. I would have lambda dx. Where this is, and now that depends on an x. So it's a little bit harder interval, but that's something that we're going to do in the next part numerically. Okay, we're going to have to have values for that. And I, just, I just made up that function just for fun. Okay, so that's that.